We've just been able to witness six innovations that are available that actually think of the mother and the baby together as one patient. Their lives are intertwined and the approaches that we think about how to address them come together. And it turns out we actually do have a neonatologist here today. No, it's not me. Uh, it is actually a member of my team. I'd like to welcome to the stage Dr. Cicely Fidel. So, welcome Cicely. Cicely and I uh, know that there's a lot of work that we've done on products that are available today, but this is not where our work ends. In fact, uh, we work on products uh, that are innovations for years to come, that can continue to address the residual burden of mortality and morbidity for the infants that we see. One common cause of this, as Dr. Faiza mentioned, is respiratory distress. Now behind us, you'll see what we typically actually use in training to understand how to take care of premature infants. So Cicely, could you please talk us through uh, what happens when a baby's born prematurely and what that looks like? Yeah, so when I'm talking to parents, uh, the way that I describe it for them, I ask them to picture a balloon that's mostly empty but has a little bit of water in it. And so that balloon will stick to itself and be difficult to blow up. Uh, and so that's what's happening in the premature lung because the babies are lacking a substance called surfactant. Uh, and surfactant really acts like a detergent that then can go in, break up that film of water, and then makes the lung much easier to inflate. Yeah, so we actually have a, a mannequin here that uh, uh, is demonstrating the signs of that. So can you uh, talk us through a little bit what you're seeing here? Yeah, so when we see respiratory distress, that looks a lot like how you or I would look if we were to be marathon runners, which I'm not, but um, you would have using extra muscles to breathe, breathing very quickly, nose flaring out. Um, you can see here the baby's using uh, their belly muscles um, to breathe, and so that's what we call belly breathing. And sometimes they'll even make little grunting sounds, so it sounds a little like, and that's them essentially trying to give themselves CPAP. They're trying to leave a little bit of pressure in their lungs so they don't collapse all the way down when they exhale. And uh, Cicely, you continue to practice as a neonatologist uh, in Boston. So uh, when you have a child that's born premature and struggling and CPAP is not enough, uh, what do you do? Well, coincidentally, we have the supplies here to provide them with surfactant. And so we can actually give the babies back the surfactant that they're missing. And the only way we currently can do that is to put a tube into the airway. And so that requires a lot of support and supplies. So the things that you need, you need a trained uh, provider who's had years of experience in putting tubes in these tiny babies. Um, you need, in this case, we're gonna use an endotracheal tube, which I have here. Um, you need a laryngoscope. So this is a special instrument that has a light on the end of it, and that allows us to see into the baby's mouth, lift up the tongue and their floppy epiglottis, and actually visualize the vocal cords, which is what we're aiming for. So let's go ahead and demonstrate how that would be done. Yes. And so I'm inserting the blade now and looking for the vocal cords. And so the anatomy is a little bit different in every baby, and so you have to figure out where to go. All right, and so once you get through the vocal cords, you can then remove this and um, use the bag mask to make sure that you're in the right place. So you can listen for breath sounds. You can look for chest rise. So in this case, we have chest rise, so we know we're in the right location. Um, and then we can remove this, and there's a special adapter you can attach to the endotracheal tube. And at the end of this adapter is the syringe of the surfactant medication, and so we would then instill that into the, the lungs of the patient. And almost instantly, you'll see them pink up and start to breathe easier. It's one of the more gratifying treatments we give um, as neonatologists. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think a uh, mannequin has ever been intubated on stage before, but uh, I don't know if you all were uh, counting, but that was about a minute or so that uh, Cicely was uh, trying to find out how to intubate the baby, and during that time, the baby's not getting support. Uh, tell us a little bit about what does this look like in the real life yeah. setting. And really, it being a few minutes, is a, um, it's much longer in real life and requires a lot more support. So you have to wait for medications to come up from the pharmacy. We give the babies 
uh, medications to keep them comfortable, to keep their heart rates in a safe range. Um, you often will wait for x-ray to visually check the tube placement. There's a lot of support personnel that are present. And then once the medication is given, uh, sometimes we can get the breathing tube out rather quickly, and then other times they might be too sleepy from the medications that we gave them to keep them comfortable or too sick, and so then we would place them on a mechanical ventilator. Uh, and all of these things create barriers, um, particularly in low and middle income countries, to the surfactant reaching all the babies that it needs to reach, and then that results in preventable deaths. Yeah, and so we've shown it in a pretty simple setup here, but as you can imagine, in a neonatal intensive care unit, all of the equipments that you see behind us would be available, and it does become quite a complex process. But sometimes innovation is actually about taking things that are standard of care and simplifying them, ensuring that they can be used uh, and be accessible to a wider population that can benefit from the impact that the in innovation can provide. This is exactly the kind of work that we have been doing in surfactant, which is challenging to deliver, and yet we've tried to simplify it, understand exactly what are the components that have the effect and drive the change that we want to see. And to help me demonstrate that in a simpler scenario, I'll have another volunteer join me on stage. My boss's boss's boss, Mr. Bill Gates. <laughs> Welcome, Bill. So Bill, uh, Cicely and I had a couple minutes yesterday to practice. So Bill, can you uh, walk us through how this would be connected to the infant uh, um, as the baby's getting support? <laughs> I guess this is our low cost CPAP uh, and that we'll use the nasal passage here and then kind of fasten that on so that it's secure. And CPAP is the cornerstone of providing air, airway pressure to keep the baby's lungs open. So that is a critical part of providing this treatment. And once that is in place. Yeah, so this is a, the new surfactant uh, that I just put right there. If you're able to see, this uh, uh, aerosolizes the surfactant so that the baby can actually uh, breathe it in. It's, you see it's, I'm going to hold it up against Bill's jacket, it's uh, turning on and off. Mm -hmm. That's happening with uh, each respiration. Each breath in is getting the medicine into the baby's lungs. This gets placed right here, right into the air that's coming in that's helping them breathe. So Bill, you've, uh, we've been working at this for a long time, uh, trying to improve different components of it. What was your reaction when you first heard about this program? Well, to be able to eliminate that uh, expert procedure, you know, I was just amazed that looking at the physics of how you get the particles right, uh, that can be done and done in a way that uh, should be fairly inexpensive. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a miracle. Yeah, so let's explain how that works. Uh, I'm going to uh, pull up a video on the slide that'll show you the complex mechanics of this. The first part is that we have a branching airway in our lungs. And the idea is that the surfactant molecule needs to get smaller and smaller as it continues to go deeper and deeper into the airways. That's one of the key technologies that we've been able to understand and move forward with. Once it gets into the deepest part of the lungs is when it can actually have some of the effects that we see. Now, what does this look like, not in an animation, but in real life in an x-ray? We'll show you here that first you see a baby. These are the lungs of the baby. You see the heart would be in the middle. It's a little bit choppy, but the breathing is very constricted right now. The chest is barely moving. The medicine has gone in, and by the end of just a few seconds, you see a substantial amount of chest expansion that can happen, helping the air come in, and most importantly, the carbon dioxide actually leave. So Bill, thanks for supporting us and for coming here to show us how it's done. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Now you know about six more innovations that could improve the patient's journey, as well as some innovations that are yet to arrive but that we're working on. Not only do these uh, have the potential to save lives, but they will ensure that more people around the world have the opportunity to thrive. We hope that this was ins as inspiring for you as it is for us in our day jobs, and that it gives you a sense that these are tools that are available today, that if we band together, work together to get these out, we can have the impact that they need. Thank you. Thank you.